of the day has been someone who tweeted in, I have a giant crush on Polly Carl. <laughs> Just gonna say. They're kind of like the rock star of this entire community. Oh my gosh, you're so hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I kind of wanted to start off with talking about your position at Steppenwolf, which is fairly recent, by the mm -hmm. way, right? Yep. Uh, about 2009. Yes. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about what your position there is and what you're in charge of and how you're you bet. gallivanting with that. Yeah, so, you know, I do a lot of stuff with Steppenwolf. Uh, I, um, uh, I work with uh, the entire artistic staff and the ensemble mm -hmm. and the season planning kinds of things. Uh, I commission writers, uh, and I do a lot of uh, dramaturgical work on new plays, uh, a, bit, uh, a lot of work on um, uh, Detroit that we just uh, produced, and now Sex with Strangers uh, that we're about to open on Sunday. And, and then I also uh, function as a producer, uh, which is probably one of the biggest jobs that I do, which is... I produce uh, uh, shows in the, our garage space. Yes. So I produce new plays in our garage space. Uh, I support, I have a producer I work with, uh, and we produce um, Chicago companies in the garage space. Uh, we produce um, a partnership with the Northwestern in the garage space. So it's like there's nine shows. Yeah, yeah it's a big, it's big. And, uh, you know, the thing that the job in my mind has been really um, set up to do is uh, it's really a bit of job that uh, kind of allows, as, as Martha's job, um, is um, you know so you know so focused on um, just the whole of the organization. Uh, I, I do a lot of the kind of day to day um, you know sort of tracking of how projects are moving along and that kind of thing. And it's very much uh, I, I love this job because I, I really believe in the idea of um, bringing producers back into the regional theaters. And so I feel like this is what that job's really set up to do. Um, and uh, it's so it's terrific. Great. Yeah. Great. Um, I want to move into something that we've been talking about in the convening, which is, of course, new work. And since you produce so much new work mm -hmm. in charge of that, um, the question of why are most regional theaters, or some regional theaters throughout uh, the country, afraid of new work? Um, and I was wondering if there is any, I mean, is there any truth in that, mm -hmm. or is there a way mm -hmm. to cure that mm -hmm. fear at all? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you know, new work is tricky business because. Uh, you never know what's going to happen with a new play. And, and, and I've been working on this play, this wonderful play called Sex with Strangers with Laura Easton that, you know, again, we're opening on Sunday. And, and I, the thing about that play is we are changing it and tweaking it until I left at like 10 o'clock on Tuesday night uh, to come here Wednesday morning, and we had done major changes in that last instant, right? So, you know, I think that uh, um, the, the result of that is you feel like, gosh, I, we don't know what the final outcome is going to be, and that's risky. I think more people do new work than we sometimes give credit for, but I think the biggest reason theaters shy away from it is that they have a preconceived notion of the expanse of their audience's imagination. Mm -hmm. And what I kind of like to say is, how could we possibly know the limits of the imagination before we've tested them? <laughs> and what I've learned at Steppenwolf and at the Playwright Center and all the theaters that I've you know, been affiliated with is that actually people surprise us in, in what they love. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and Steppenwolf's been so great. They talk to their audience, and what the Steppenwolf audience says is, you know, if you do it, I want to come and see it, and even if I don't like it, I want to come back and see the next thing. Like, that's how you, you prime people to, to trust you. And that happens in a dialogue with an audience mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yes, because when you put a theater into a city, the audience doesn't necessarily know what they want. The theater tells them what they want. Yep. And then that's how you build your audience. Um, but for some reason, it just seems that a lot of theaters are just a little bit scared of bringing in anything new for fear of, well, I mean, the fear of not making enough money. Um, yes. But. <laughs> and that's a whole other issue, right? Yes, Which is yes. why we, you know, we talk about, I mean, Zelda Fitchewitt Handler says this great thing in an American theater article from, you know, 2000 and something about, you know, the difference between, uh, um, you know, commercial mm -hmm. and nonprofit theaters mm -hmm. is that, you know, we broker in the, in the product and not in the money. It's ours is about the artistic vision. And, yes. But, you know, by 2011, the, the artistic vision and the money, those things start to conflate in, mm -hmm. in ways that can, can make it really difficult for artistic directors. True, true. And I, I was actually asking uh, this question to Diane Ragsdale last night, mm -hmm. which is the issue of nonprofit theaters in America and whether or not they are still effective um, and whether or not they will be dying out. And then she gave me some great statistics about okay. how 3,000 new theaters opened in 2007 and I was in a recession, but 47% of those theaters cannot like, manage their bank account. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering, do you think that there's still going to be a room for nonprofit theater work in America, mm -hmm. or would that soon become a defunct model? 
You know, uh, boy, that's such a great question, and I, I'd much rather listen to Diane Reitzel's answer to that question than my own. Um, but I, I guess I feel like I don't. I always think models may change, so you know, a nonprofit could go away. What I think feels important to me about the nonprofit model, and what I believe in, you know, kind of wholeheartedly, which is, and and, and I say this with, you know, an understanding that that art has to connect to people and to audiences, but. I'm a real believer in art for art's sake, and if art is always about you know what it's gonna what it's gonna mean in terms of dollars, mm -hmm. I feel like the the best of the nonprofit is we make art because it matters, just because it matters, and that for me, you know, when I was, when I was a kid and I grew up in a small town, didn't have a lot of money, and I read novels and 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 I didn't see theater when I was a kid, but I read novels, and those novels weren't written with me in mind, they were written because an artist had a vision about a thing and he decided or she decided to write that novel, you know? And thank God, because in Elkhart, where I didn't feel like there was a lot of outlet for my imagination, I lost myself in, you know, stories and in books. And, and I think that that's, you know, art at its best, is, it, 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 that's what it does for people, you know? And I think that that has to always be a possibility. And if, the, and if, if money's always tied to that, I just, I, I have to wonder what the, what the impact of just making art for its own sake, like what happens to that? Well, it's that into, we have a question from the Twitter world. Yes. Uh, Molly, you want to? Yeah, it says, um, do, do you think theaters are less inclined to do a new work if it's already been self-produced? Um, boy, that's, a, that's such an excellent question. First of all, I'm a huge fan of self-producing, you know, because I feel like th that a play is not a play until it's actually had an audience. And I've learned that more in the last year and a half, being out of the Playwright Center and being in a lot of productions. You, you don't know what a play is until you have an audience and self-producing is great. And actually, I think, I want to say no. I mean, I don't think, I, I think, you know, there's lots of conversations about world premieres and that kind of stuff, but I feel there's less of that. I think if you self-produce your play and it's good and it's successful and people come see it and they like it, um, then you, that I think you only increase your chances that A, that play's going to get better, and if that play gets better, more places are going to want to do it. And you know, the Workhouse Collective in Minneapolis, who I just so I just so dig those guys, and they're really self-producing. And the outcome of their self-producing is their work is starting to get attention in other places. So I, I think it's a great impulse, and one one should indulge it. Great, great, great. and thank you for that question. Um, we've been <clears throat> ending most of these interviews mm -hmm. with the uh, question of, and I think this is really good for you because you're in a really great place. Uh, of what, what do you see in the future? For, mm -hmm. new, for new work in America? What, do you, what, do you, what would you like to see in the next mm -hmm. five, 10 years to happen? Well, I think, you know, uh, I, I guess for me, uh, with, with new plays, I mean, I love, you know, I, 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 as many people know, I've been a, a lot of the artists that I've collaborated have done all sorts of strange kinds of plays. And, and I see a lot of artists like, um, like Elisa Damore who can do Detroit on the Steppenwolf stage, but then do this building a forest project that's mm -hmm. completely, uh, insane in a warehouse and they're building trees and it's so cool and they're generating stuff and so what I like is the idea that you know more people believe that they can that, that they can make art you know that they're not hindered by institutions but that they have visions and they just make them so and and Lisa's been one example of an artist I've worked with a lot who just is like you know what I'd like to do I'd like to have a big you know a big thing happen around the Stone Arch Bridge in Minneapolis and I'd like 200 artists to be involved and it's crazy and you generate it and you see what happens and you don't worry like whether, you know, you make a billion dollars on it. So I guess for me, you know, what I want to see is more people feel like art is about them, you know? And I think artists who put self-produce, who put themselves out there, who take risks, who make work, um, they're going to create a culture where people feel like actually arts are, you know, that when, when Obama gives his State of the Union address, arts will be at the number one on his list, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the future of the art for me, and that's, that's kind of what I hope, you know, that's, that's more the hope we're going to live in. That is the best, most optimistic ending that we have. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, thank you all for watching, and thank you so much, Polly Carl. Thank you so thank much. You. A really a pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank you. you guys. Thanks, all right. Thank, thank you. you.